I mean the statement that the next or even current year is going to be the year of the Linux desktop has basically existed forever. And yet it never truly happened. Some even dare to say that it will never happen since it is very unlikely for an open operating system to just blow up overnight. Steady growth is a way more likely scenario. The Linux desktop has been growing slowly over the years and just surpassed 3%. That might not seem all that much given the small number, but those 3% are actually quite a lot of people. And yet, while the Linux desktop will definitely continue to grow slowly, I personally think that not too long from now, we will see an explosion in Linux users and the year of the Linux desktop will finally settle in. Don't believe me? Let's talk about it! But first, I'd like to remind you that you don't forget to give this video a like. And if you want to see more Linux videos just like this one, then you should also subscribe. Thank you very much and on we go. Alright, let's get straight to the point. If you're into tech or open source news, then you might have already heard that China just released the 1.0 version of a new Linux operating system called OpenKylin, or more accurately, OpenChillin. And I guess by just the looks of it, you already know what it's going to compete with. Yeah, it looks a lot like Windows. It's a distro which is heavily being developed by a dozen Chinese companies, including the China Industrial Control System Cyber Emergency Response Team, which is under the jurisdiction of the Industry and Information Technology Ministry, or in short, the government. But what's really interesting about it is that those companies are not the only ones who contributed to it. In fact, OpenChillin's development was an international effort with lots of contributors outside of China. And that's really interesting in my opinion. Because basically the whole reason on why China itself is involved in this project is to become independent of macOS and Windows. But they do it open source. Props to them. And not gonna lie, that's a big deal. Because I don't really think that China is after being independent if needed, but they're actually after getting rid of Windows and macOS entirely. Or in the end at least. What's probably gonna happen is that they will slowly fade out other operating systems by mostly selling devices with OpenChillin or a proprietary version of it and people and companies just need to adapt to keep up. Though they could also enforce it, which wouldn't be all that surprising to be honest. But anyway, it's a big deal either way. Because it means that if China was to go through with that plan, then that would be a whole chunk of new Linux users. Really huge in fact. And the number could grow even more if they decide to distribute it in a lot more languages. And I believe that their approach is not really all that complicated. They want to keep OpenChillin open for research facilities, space travel and crucial applications, which makes sense since you want to utilize the cooperation that open source comes with. For the market, it might be a different story. I'm not sure if they will keep it as it is there, since the only way how you could profit from it would be telemetry which needs to be traceable back to a person or location, or to push proprietary apps on a software store. The latter one in particular would be very interesting for Linux enthusiasts since you can probably get rid of all of that and basically enjoy a well maintained and polished Linux operating system. As long as OpenChillin stays open source, it would be really easy to detect some weird behavior. That is if you're into reading source code like a Harry Potter novel. Anyway, OpenChillin has the potential to increase the Linux market share quite drastically. And much more importantly, it could lead to a massive drop of Windows and macOS users. If we also consider some of the software that ships with it, then we also see that you don't even need to rely on Microsoft's expensive subscriptions anymore. I'm personally not quite sure about the security of those solutions, but as long as they are open source, you could find out if you investigate it. And generally speaking, OpenChillin is very easy to use. They have a visually pleasing installation experience with a blurry background and everything. The overall usability and choice of design makes it look and feel very modern and polished. 
You have your typical windows, uh, I mean desktop icons, a start menu, taskbar and of course quick settings and a notification area. You can also toggle a tablet mode, which makes the whole operating system feel like a literal Android device. The settings app is extremely powerful and yet very simple. OpenGLN supports fractional scaling out of the box. You can update it right here, as well as customize the desktop environment with some themes. Pretty nice overall. It also comes with a software store that features some software which I never heard of, some even seems proprietary, but luckily, thanks to its Debian base, you can add more repos or install Flatpak to work around that. Like I don't know, I don't trust it completely. By the way, speaking of trusting, during the installation process I didn't notice anything related to telemetry, which is interesting. I couldn't actually find anything in the settings related to it as well. So there is a chance that the operating system itself actually doesn't collect any data about you. Would be kind of nice. Yeah, the rest of the operating system just feels like Windows, but also a bit like KDE Plasma. One thing that OpenGLN does better than Windows, however, is virtual desktops, workspaces or whatever you wanna call it. While it generally looks the same when you use your mouse, in contrast to Windows, you can easily switch between them with the Super Windows key and tab, which is much more convenient than Windows, Control and the arrow keys. Overall speaking, OpenGLN is definitely an operating system which aims to compete with macOS and Windows in terms of functionality, but also overall design. While it is very locked down in terms of software by default, with a bit of tinkering you can get access to a wider range of packages. But that being said, it does have some downsides as well. As of right now, the only two languages available are English and Chinese Simplified, which might not be for everyone. Additionally, if you have a multiple monitor setup, then you might be disappointed to hear that the default display server is still Xorg and X11, instead of Wayland. While UK UI, the desktop environment, does technically support Wayland, it doesn't seem to be deemed ready just yet. Oh yeah, and the big one. China. Like I'm not pushing down on China as a country specifically, but a government being involved in general. Because this can go in many ways. Maybe some local restrictions, span of the operating system in western countries, blah 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 blah. You know it becomes difficult once politics get involved. But that's enough of me. What are your thoughts about Open Chillin? Do you like it? Are you having any doubts? Please let us know in the comments down below. Oh and when you're heading down there, don't forget to stop and give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your support. And Here's already the next video. It's probably good. I don't know. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you are. I'll see you around.